Part two of painting dungeon tiles. Pewter gray on a sponge. Let's see what it looks like. I don't know if I like it. What do you think, Sean? Texture? I like it? Need some brown. Okay, Sean. You know what? I didn't ask about other colors. I said, do you like this, Dick? Um, this might be too wet. <laughs> wow, way to go there, Sean. Let me just let me just blot off some of this. I like that graffiti, Bill. I didn't make that. It was you guys, remember? Are you, are you I had sure? to go to Walmart and buy all this. You know what? I like it. I'm digging it. I'm digging this texture. Brown. Yeah. I think what I'll do is hit this gray. Give it that surface color, let that dry, and then go back over it, like Sean suggested, with a little brown. But a, a drier brown, maybe? Because I feel like this is kind of a wet splotch, you know? And green. Green? Mossy tiles. Oh, mossy tiles. Okay, so the gray brown, green, little the green. Between the cracks and green. Well, let's see how we can incorporate that. Now, I could do like a green wash, but I don't know if I want to do that. That's more of a wet, that's like a... a here, I'm going to try the other side of the sponge because it's drier. Oh, there's like hairs and shit on this. It's gross. Hey, people are trying to make tiles in here. Now I'm trying like a different technique. It's kind of like a slapping technique and, uh, and I don't like it. So I'm going to go back to what I was doing before. This kind of wet Now I will say this is like assembly line straight up because I'm just getting a whole bunch of painting done in a short amount of time. So I, I will definitely have to go back over this with some brown or something else because I feel like this is gonna dry really light and I don't wanna lose my dark colors that I got on this base. But that's pretty good so far just looking at it. Close the studio door. Like in the gray. Yeah, I think it'll, it'll really pop. It'll look good. And it's a very, it's kind of, to be honest, is a little more watered down than I'm used to. So my expectation that is that it's going to dry really light. But I think if I do kind of a dry, the next coat with a, like a, a really dry, sporadic hit of dark brown across these and then the last coat is like a lighter gray dry brush I think it'll come out really nice I think this is a good second coat though. I mean, even though it is a bit more watered down than I'm used to applying. Hey Bill. What? We're going to that lizard store today. Give me some napkins. What is that? I don't have that. Do you want these? Just yeah. Just roll thing? Yeah. Okay. Rip off some. I'm not gonna throw it. I got too much water. Heavy. I'm not this, this is Carl, everybody. Say hi, Carl. Carl's uh, on the show. Carl's very famous. He's he's known in certain circles for what? For his for his bardic immunity. Yes, I did soft. Now you're gonna go all over them all again. Well, this is a heavier coat of paint. It's less watered down. So now I'm gonna on these last few tiles over here. I want to just see what the difference is gonna be. See. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's what it should be. So I, I basically screwed up. Now the great thing about terrain crafting is that you never really can screw up. 
if you do screw up, just do something else, like paint over it, or hit it again with another coat if you need to, or dry brush something, or do a wash. You know, if you lost your dark stuff, you do a dark wash. If it's not bright enough, you do a highlight. So I'm going back over these watered down ones, and it's gonna be just right. See, some of these ones that are already drying, there's barely any gray on them because it was too watered down. Now this is gonna be a much better coat. But I still, I don't wanna fill in all the cracks because then I lose all my cool texture, which is why I like these tiles to begin with. See, so you can't ever really screw up. That was my biggest learning curve with uh, doing terrain is I used to be too worried about it, about screwing up or making a, um, a mistake or, you know, having everything have to be perfect. And the beautiful thing about it is it doesn't. All right, I'm gonna do a little, little more on this heavier coat of the paint. And you know what, if all of them aren't perfectly the same, that's fine too. Who cares? It's more realistic that way. It looks like erosion then. Which also looks cool. I'm not hitting these consistently at all, I'm just hitting them kind of sporadically. Now, that's all gonna dry real fast because it's not a heavy coat. So, Sean, you said dark brown? I just said brown. <laughs> but are you saying dark brown because you only have dark brown? No, I have all sorts of browns. I have nutmeg brown, I have burnt umber. Burnt umber is like a darker brown. I'd go with the nut. Sean, I just mixed burnt umber. God damn it. Uh, that's fine. Look, see see how dark that is? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that looks fine. pretty dark. All right, here we go. Yeah. See how I'm not hitting everything? Like, I'm only hitting each one like once or twice because I don't want it to be completely covered in brown. I just want it to look kind of like some dirt on the floor, right? I still think some green would be nice. Okay, Sean, slow down. Trying to do all this before stupid study hall. All right, so that's giving it a little brown there. Let's, let's take a look at it. Alternating my stippling, so. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, you could push in and get a really extreme close up too, Michael, if you want. I know, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, that dirt on the floor. What do you think, Nader? I like this. I mean, at first I was like, I mean, if it's the best you can do, then I like it. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, all right. I'm, I'm digging that. I dig it, Sean. It's got some, uh, it's bringing it to life, buddy. Okay. But does it look like dried blood, though, now? Not, like, I'm looking at it, and it kind of looks... I mean, which could also be a hint cool. to what we're doing. That you guys are going to die in a dungeon? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it is. And there's a dragon. There's a dragon, it just, I leave these black because the brown would be scorched from the dragon's powerful breath. Unless it was a dragon that breathed something not to fire. Like ice dragon. Like magic. A green Breathe. dragon. Breathes magic. Yes, breathes magic. <laughs> Okay, I'm pretty happy so far. This look, that's coming together. So if we look really close now, what we need to do is let these dry, completely dry. Then I'm gonna go back over them with a light dry brush of the granite, where I'm gonna put it. 
of this here granite gray. So it's all, it's not white. I don't actually, on stone stuff, I don't use white as my dry brush. I'll do the granite gray because it dries very light anyway. So that'll be, and, and even, you know what I can do? I can, uh, here, I'll demo a little. So the key to uh, dry brushing is blotting off your brush so that there's barely any paint on it. You don't want a wet brush when you dry brush, okay? So this tile looks more or less pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is just brush lightly across the edges. It's almost like you're dusting the tiles. I'm gonna go around the edges. And that gives it that kind of uh, highlighted edges and kind of a drier look to it. Kind of brings out the details. And it sort of mutes the colors too. So if you look at the difference here, just between these two, Right, you could see them side by side. This one's kind of lighter. This one's darker. So just to finish that off, I'm just gonna dry brush it. And I'm gonna dry brush from multiple directions. I'm gonna hit those edges, because that's, that's what I'm doing when I dry brush, I'm highlighting. So I'm gonna hit those edges to make them pop a little bit. And uh, when the dry brush no longer does its thing, that means you gotta reload some paint onto the brush. So you dab there, but then you gotta wipe it down. So it's like you're loading enough to do the dry brush, but not too much. See, there's an example of too much. Now it looks like marble, which I didn't really want it to. So I'm just gonna go around the edges real light. And once I've gotten some more paint off of that, I'll hit this, go this way, Go that way, boom, done. So that's what they'll all end up looking like. And it's cool, you could see a little bit of Sean's like um, brown in there. And of course the, the black, you're still maintaining your black in the shadows and the cracks. Ooh, that looks cool. Hold it there. Now some people will do a black wash. So after they do their dry brush, they let everything completely dry. And then they do a black wash to refill in the shadows and the cracks. I don't uh, do that. I don't have anything against people who do, but I just don't do it. I don't see a need to do it. When I look at my tiles, I'm usually pretty happy with the result after the dry brush. So I work from dark to light and uh, it's worked pretty good so far. Some of these are sticking to the table, so I'll probably have to go clean them up afterwards, but these little two by twos are really fast to paint. And I could tell that I'm putting more pressure on this while I'm dry brushing it, so my paint needs a reload. So when I reload, I, dry, I wipe off the paint, and then I go light when I first start because the brush still has a lot of paint on it. So I don't have to go real heavy. You get a feel for it. You know, you just you got to practice a little bit, um, but you get a feel for it. The thing that I really like about terrain crafting is um, I just feel like you know. It's, first of all, an interesting kind of hobby. Second, when you get into the zone of it, it's it's kind of like relaxing. It's kind of like meditation in a way, you know? So um, I kind of like it for that aspect, like, a, like an art therapy, you know? 
But then the biggest thing is, is I love busting this stuff out on the table because I'm, you know, the terrain is, it's not a diorama, it's meant to be used. So when I do terrain crafting, it's for the game. And I like, you know, versatile and modular terrain. So stuff that I can, you know, use over and over again. If I'm gonna put the time into making it, man, I wanna be able to use it. You know, I don't wanna just build some cool model and it's for one encounter and then it's done. So things like dungeon tiles became popular because you could reconfigure how they're set up and use them over and over with uh, nearly endless possibilities. And um, when I'm highlighting this stuff, you know, it, not every tile has to be perfect. They don't all have to be exactly the same. And it's nice to see little subtle, subtle uh, like color changes between some of these. There's some that are a little darker, some that are lighter. So when I, you know, we lay them out, they don't look like carbon copies. It looks more natural. So I got a lot more to do. Got to take a break for study hall and then I'll come back at it.